Hello friends, today we're going to talk about how I made this AI music video, which is uh, automatically audio synced. So I thought we were going to have a look at that and I'm going to show you how I made it. Uh, let's skip to skip here so you can actually see the, the audio syncing. Is that every time the drum hits, the AI zooms into the animation. So I'm going to show you how that uh, how that works. So first of all, what I did, I created a, a start. We need a starting frame for the animation, and I made this by setting a prompt. This robot Android, and I found one that I liked. I picked this one, and I saved all these settings, and I put them into uh, the forum which is a stable diffusion collab that works great for AI animation. And I saved that prompt and I put it down here, animation prompts. We'll look at that later. So first of all, we got to decide what part of the music is going to be audio synced. And I choose the drums because that's the most efficient way most of the time. If you have a song, you can fine tune it in Premiere or Adobe Audition or whatever you're using. There are also AI tools for this. I have used this site in the past. And uh, what you can do is you just um, enter your file here and it'll give you an input. So if you listen to this, this is the original song. And if you skip up to where the beat starts. This is the song without the drums now, they actually separate the drums. So if you listen to this, you can hear. So this is what we want. You can have 10 minutes free trial here to just get these drums. And when you have that file, you're going to input that into this audio to keyframe string generator. So I've prepared the file, put it in here, it loads the file. And it generates keyframes for actually the volume of what's going on. And if you change it, we are going to use disco, but if you change it to CSV just to see what's happening, you see that for every frame, this is one frame, two, three, four, five, etc. For every frame, there is a value. Right now, the value is one. This is the default setting, is one plus x, which, which is uh, the volume that is reading to the power of four. So when the volume strikes, you should get one point something. If we scroll down, we can see here, yeah, we're starting to see some values here. It's 1.47, for example. And the reason that it's one is that in the forum, there are different choices when it comes to animation. You can work with angle, zoom, translations, uh, which is uh, moving the camera right left and, and up i've set this to 2d but uh, for 3d you can move it in, in um, all three dimensions if you're using a value like the zoom that i've been using which is moving into the image it's a multiplier so one is nothing so 1.1 would mean that it's moving in and 0 0.99 would mean that it's moving out so what we have as the default value here is actually working pretty good for the zoom if you would want to change, for example, uh, the translation, which is not a multiplier, but we're from, from zero and up or minus, you need to change this one to, well, nothing. You would have the value x, depending how you know, strong you want it, you can make it to the power of two or three or four or multiply it by, you know, the value. So x will always be your volume. And then you can just decide how much more you want of it. But we want one. Uh, plus x by the power of, I think I had set 2 for that one, uh, but the default is 4. Anyway, so what happens here then, it's at every frame you've set the value of 1, which is coming from here, and then x, which is 0, because there is no volume in the first frames. So you have no zoom, no zoom, no zoom, no zoom. Um, and that's, you know, up to like frame 300 ish or something. And then it starts zooming in. And then you have the angle parameter here, which is basically a 2D rotation. So at 
frame zero, which is the start of the animation. We have an angle rotation of one, which is a positive. So it's going to move to the right, if I'm not mistaken. And then at frame 50, it's going to go to minus one, which is a rotation to the left. And then at frame 100, it's going to go back. You see a pattern here. It goes one, minus one, one, and then it ups to four. So that's a faster rotation. And then it goes slower and then it reverses, reverses again faster, slower, reverses, reverses, and goes faster. So you can play around with, with these values between different frames and, and whatever. Uh, it's a lot of fun. But it also takes uh, a lot of time to change these values as the, their manual. All the angle values I set manually and the zoom value is based from this um, audio to keyframe string. Anyway, so let's get, go back. We need the disco value here. That's what uh, you're going to use for the forum. And then it's very important that you change the frame rate to what you're going to be using. So you have to consider what you will be using in the final product. So if you set like 24 here and you end up using 25 or 30 in your video, this is not going to sync and you render a full animation, you know, completely useless. And due to the render time of these animations, you'll be wasting a lot of time. So think about what frame rate you, you want to use and um, stick with it. And seeing as, let's talk about this mathematical function. Seeing as this is a power of, so you would think that a power of four, for example, is bigger than a power of two, but it's not because this X value is actually zero point something. So let's say here, you have a volume strike. Let's talk about the X. So the X could be zero, but also be like, 0 0.4, 0 0.1. So here's a big volume change. Here's a small volume change. And then you have the, the one, which is our multiplier we have here. So you have one plus the, say you have a big volume change, a 0.4, and the power of two. So that would mean, let's bring up a calculator, 0 0.4 times 0 0.4, 1.16. So let's do 1 plus 0 0.4, 4, and again, 0 0.4. So you actually get a smaller value here. So it would be 1.0256. So because this is smaller than a 1, the power of, you know, can I reverse this, goes smaller. If you're a math wizard, please explain better in the comments. I'm not it. I tried to the best of my ability. If, you, if you're using the default to the power of, smaller makes bigger and vice versa because it's a zero point something value. So this, just copy all of that, go back into your forum, put that into the zoom. Now let's talk a little bit more about the settings here from, from the start. Uh, you need to set the animation mode to 2D, which was set to none at first. Up the max frames, depending on how long the, uh, your song is. So you can just talk about how many frames uh, per second you want um, your video to be. So you just, you know, multiply the frames by your, um, by the seconds of your song and you have the value for your frames. Uh, the strength schedule is how much image changes. So we're going to have a sampling step of 50. If you have a sampling step 50, you would take that times 0.75. That would mean each subsequent frame would have uh, this minus this. So 12.5 samples per frame. Depending on the value here, each um, new frame will get more or less samples. Play around with it to see how that works for you. You don't need to change a lot of here. This is a new setting for uh, the forum version 04. It basically blends frame into the next frame. So if you want to save a rendering time, you can set this to two or three. That would mean like if you set this to two, it would render frame one, then it would render frame three, and it will blend frame two between them. And then it will move forward, render frame five, render frame seven, render frame nine, etc. And they will blend the frames in between. So it's a time saver. It can make uh, your animation smoother can also make it messier. So play with that. Um, for this animation, I haven't changed any of these values. They're default. 
this, let's talk about this. When you're starting your animation, this doesn't matter at all. But if you quit it, and it might, you know, if you're doing a big scene, it might take hours and you uh, need to go back, you can resume where you started. Look at your images, your files, take the time string, put it in here, check that box, and it's going to resume from wherever you were. Here's where your prompt's going to be. Here are the prompts for the still images, but we are not going to be using that at all. We're going to be using animation prompts. And these are based by frame. So here at the start of the animation, this is our frame that we had from this image. So if you start having a starting frame, that's what you should do. You should have the same settings and then match that up in the forum. And then if you want changes in your animation, make new prompts dependent on where you want them. So we're starting here at frame 200. We're getting robot birds flying up to towards the sky. At frame 400, clouds and planets in space like a nebula. You see how that works. You know, when you want to change, put a frame number, put a new prompt in there. Make sure you have a comment at the end. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, again here, make sure you get the same settings in if you're having the starting um, frame. Uh, I ran this at 6 by 320 and then I upscale it, I think, four times. Uh, batch name, if you want to be saved into a specific folder. So I'm going to run this and um, show you how it works. It's going to take some time to start all of this. And I have, if I haven't mentioned that already, I'm going to put all the links down in the description. But I strongly recommend the forum if you want to use AI animations. And it has a super active uh, community and a Discord. You can ask questions and uh, there's some great help there. Now, we didn't talk about setting this up. And m most of the time, uh, collabs are easy to run. But there's one thing. You need to download the model. You get that from Hugging Face. I'm going to put a link in the description. And then you need to put it in uh, your drive, AI models. There you have it. And that's what's uh, referenced here, model checkpoint. And as you can see here, that rendering has started. Rendering animation frame 0 of 5,500. And this is our starting frame. You remember it from the first. And as you can see here, the image is starting to rotate. And that's our angle value that we set. Because the zoom isn't happening until frame 300-ish. So it's very cool that you can see this live and... Uh, the files are saved in your Google Drive, and uh, there's actually an option here to create the video uh, from your frames. So you could just easily uncheck that, set your frames, and when you have uh, rendered all the images, just press run here. What I did, I took all the frames and ran them in Premiere to have more choices when um, post-processing the video. So yeah. This is how I made the AI music video for Grammatics, the ghosts of Piran, which were automatically audio synced. Hoping it's gonna help you make something cool. If you like this content, please press the like button and subscribe, and that will help me a lot so I can create more of these explainer videos. So yeah, good luck, have fun, make some cool animations. And uh, if you make any animations based on my tips here, please, you know, Give me a link in the comments so I can look at them. Would be super cool. Bye bye.